Beer Junkies. Now we are. Now we're straightened out, right? I think I think we're good. Yes, sir. Uh, we're, we'll be getting to that in just a moment. Now, is this your first uh, Motor City Comic Con? No, I did one uh, 40 something years ago. When things were a little rough in Motor City. Things were very rough. There were streets you couldn't go down. There are still some streets you can't go down, unfortunately. I hear that, but they all look like Brooklyn to me, so I don't care. All right, fair enough. Now, are you enjoying the Motor City Comic Con now that you've been back to it? Are you, it's obviously grown a little bit. Not only has it grown, but yesterday I was here. I had a line of people coming in, and I couldn't move them through fast enough to get to the end of the line for half a day. Half a day. That was four or five hours. And they just kept on coming and kept on coming. And it's not that we didn't talk and didn't have a good time. It's just there was so many people here. It's amazing. I'm, I, I have never actually run into that. Usually I can move people through real quick. And I hate lines. I don't know. When you go to the movies, you, you get on a line, you kind of stand there and grouse and feel bad. I hate lines. So I never ask people to wait online. But yesterday was incredible. And we'll see what happens today. I mean, it's really quite intense. That's def I'm definitely glad that you're enjoying it. Now, you mentioned that I have on green. Obviously, obviously, you are synonymous with the Green Lancer. How was it coming up with some of those stories? Because a lot of the books nowadays, they don't tackle some of the issues that you were tackling in those books back then. You asked me about John Stewart. Oh, I'll ask you about John Stewart. We'll, we'll get to that. Okay, we're going to talk about John Stewart. We're going to talk about John Stewart. Okay, it, maybe it's just me, but back in the day when I was working on Green Lantern, uh, and, we were, and we were tackling a lot, of, uh, a lot of subjects like the Chicago 7 trial and, uh, and drug addiction and all these other things. Um, uh, it was very clear that we were getting to subjects that were, yeah, who cares, like overpopulation. Eh, you know, it's like, yeah. And so I realized, you know, time was going by and they were, they were going to cancel this thing out because it was, too, it was too popular and too many people were stealing books out of the back of the uh, warehouses of the distributors and selling them in garages and motels. And it was all rowdy and crazy. And I thought, you know what we ought to do? And I went to my editor and I said, you know, Julie, Julie Schwartz, Julia Schwartz, probably the best editor in the business. I said, Julie, we ought to have an assistant for Hal Jordan. And Julie said, we have an assistant. We got this guy named Guy, uh, Guy Gardner. And I said, well, I'm sorry, Julie. I don't read the comic books. I don't know what you're talking about. So he opened the comic book, and he showed me this guy, and he was this blonde gym teacher. And I said, okay, so this is what we should do. We should hit him with a bus. And Julie said, what? I said, well, we should hit him with a bus. I said, well, why do you want to hit him with a bus? Well, if we just break his arm, he'll be gone for like a month and a half. But if we hit him with a bus, he'll have internal injuries and it'll be like a long time. Why do you want to do that? I said, I think we ought to have another replacement uh, for Green Lantern. Why do you want to do that? Well, okay. An alien spaceship comes down to Earth. It's got a purple guy inside. He's going to die. Now, he needs a replacement. So he sends the ring out all over the world to find the most worthy, bravest guy on Earth to replace him to be the Green Lantern. And it goes all over the world, and it, and it passes by Batman, it passes by Superman, it passes by all the heroes of the DC and Marvel Universe, and it finds a test pilot. I can buy that, test pilot. I'm a big fan of Chuck Yeager. I don't know if you know who Chuck Yeager is. Probably what we call balls of steel, okay? So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm with that, right? So then they have the ring go out again, and it flies all around the world and passes by Batman and Superman and all the rest of it, and it finds a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant gym teacher. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just a gym teacher. You know, it's possible. I think there's a, it's possible. Maybe that the next bravest guy on earth, the next best guy on the earth would be a gym teacher, maybe. I've met some pretty tough gym teachers. I think we all have. He said, well, what are, you, what are you trying to do? I said, well, I think we ought to. Julie, look, you ever watch the Olympics? He says, I watch the Olympics. Julie, of course, is Jewish. And if you're a New York Jew, you have to be liberal. So you have to watch everything. Because otherwise, the most liberal, practically a socialist. You know what I'm saying? She said, I watched the Olympics. I said, Julia, how often do you see three white guys? 
I'm just saying gold, silver, bronze, three white. Usually I see black guys. I see Asian guys. I, I see white guys. I maybe in archery. Maybe in archery I see white guys, a lot of white guys. Shot put maybe, you know. But really, I see a mix. He says, you want a black green lantern, don't you? I said, Julie, really, am I that shallow that you can see through me so easily? He said, what about if I do an Asian green lantern? I said, oh, if you want to do an Asian Green Lantern, there's nothing wrong with that. You don't have a big good record with the Asians. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, you have a, this guy that you've had in the strip for 10 years who is a friend of Green Lantern name, and you, you named him Pie Face. Uh, just, I'm just saying, if I were an Asian, I'd be pretty pissed off. I, I don't think that, that you don't want to be calling an Asian Pie Face. It just... He said, okay, he said, fine. You can do a black Green Lantern. I said, no, 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 I don't want a black Green Lantern. I want a black college graduate professional. He's got to have a, a profession. I don't want a gangbanger who suddenly sees the light. I don't want to have an African chief that nobody can relate to. I'm sorry, I don't care who you are in the world. You can't relate to an African chief. I want an American college graduate black Green Lantern who's got a profession. He doesn't have to have a job because you know what? Unemployment in New York at that time was about, for blacks in the Harlem, was about 35%. Sucked. So he said, okay. So he had Denny O'Neill write him. And Denny wrote a good script, really good script. And I read the first page. First page had the character, really good. College graduate, very good guy. His name was Lincoln Washington. So I went to Denny and I said, Denny, Lincoln, Washington. Denny says, not me. Julie, uh, not me. I didn't do that. Julie Schwartz did that. So I go to Julie and I close the door. I say, Julie, Lincoln, Washington. <laughs> Julie says, what? I know lots of guys with names like that. So no, no, that's his slave name, Julie. Lots of guys are changing their name because they had slave names. That's a wrong name. If you want to have this room filled with letters, you just call him Lincoln. I'm not going to be drawing him. Somebody else will be drawing him, but I'm not. Lincoln Washington. He says, well, you come up with a name. I said, a name. Just put names in a hat and pull out a name. He says, well, you do it. You pick a name. I said, fine, fine. John Stewart. How would I know he'd become a late night comedian? Really? <laughs> How would I know? So anyway, it's John Stewart. So, okay, this story has two endings. First ending is, happened recently. They made a Green Lantern movie. And they announced the movie and they said they're gonna have Hal Jordan Green Lantern. And all the kids in America went, who the hell is Hal Jordan? <laughs> John Stewart is Green Lantern, we know that. Somehow Warner Brothers and DC Comics equated selling 80,000 copies of a comic book to 10 million people watching a cartoon show on Saturday or Sunday. Where, where John Stewart was clearly Green Lantern. Everybody knew it. Everybody in America knew it, except these idiots at Warner's, at these folks at Warner's. I'm sorry. No offense, guys. I'm just saying knuckleheads. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? And so they lost $150 million. I don't think they'll make that mistake again. I have a feeling that's not going to happen again. Anyway, so that's my first ending of the story. The second ending of the story happened much, much closer to doing John Stewart. I did the book, and of course, I colored it because I wanted to make sure that I got it, I colored it right. And of course, my John Stewart has dark skin. And so I handed all the coloring in to my editor. And the next day, he and the head of production, Sal Harrison, another New York liberal Jew, you have to say, very, very close to socialists, they have to stay liberal, still came to see me said, Neil, uh, we noticed that you colored uh, John Stewart kind of dark. I said, yeah. So, well, uh, are you sure you want to do that? Yeah, I think I did it. I said, well, when we usually, when we usually do black people, we usually color them light brown. I said, well, I'm not saying there aren't light brown skinned people. But most of the black people I know 
have darker skin. So, well, you, you know, usually we don't do that. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm going to repeat what they said to me and you're not going to believe it, but I'm going to repeat it. Are you sure black people won't be offended? No. I think they've been offended for about 50 years. And no, I don't think they're going to be offended. I think they're going to be very, very happy. Well, it's on you. I said, well, okay, if you get a letter from somebody who says John Stewart's skin is too dark, you just give it to me and I'll go ahead and answer it. That's my, that's my second ending of the story. So John Stewart is pretty much established. And I think now we have more characters. We have the Falcon, who is a much better character. And, you know, I think things have been um, rearranged a little bit better. Yeah, we got one last question for you. A There's been a lot of debate. The proper pronunciation for another character that you created, is it Raz? Raz Al Ghul. You heard it from R A apostrophe S is pronounced Raz. There's no S H in there. There's no Raish. Where would anybody? I don't get that. It's it's the sign of being affected. You know, I want to call him Raish because I think that's sophisticated. No, R A apostrophe S. If somebody's going to spell his name and it's Raish, wouldn't he spell it R A S C H? That's how we would spell it. He wouldn't have it go out there and say R A apostrophe S. Obviously, that's Raz. I mean, in the English language, as I understand it, and as I understand it, those letters are in English. There's not, there's no Arabic letter there at all. I spoke to an Arab kid who was 16 years old at a comic book convention. I said, "Is there anything in the Arabic languages that would make me want to say Ray?" She says, "No, it's Raz." I said, "You know what? Thank you. Shake hands." We appreciate it. Thank you, Neil. Pleasure. Yeah, thank Pleasure. you. Okay. Culture junkies.